Yay, we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Swirl Suite. My name is Sarita. My wine blog is Vine Me Up. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And I'm so happy to be with you guys today. How was your holiday? How was the first of the year? Good for me. Good. Two thumbs up. Yes. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fireworks, champagne, friends, you know, all the things that New Year's are made of. Yay. <laughs> and we have a special guest today, Miss Nikki Brooks. Thank you for joining us. Hey, ladies. Thanks for having me. Yay. Hmm. Welcome to the craziness. Right. Girl. Like, I was like, okay, we, we, we might be toned down today. <laughs> today. You know. Yeah, yeah. It takes us a while to warm up. Right. Um, and it's a new year. We're keeping it clean. Nikki Brooks, please tell everyone about yourself. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm here because um, I'm here to talk about not only the drinking clean topic, but uh, my business, Zen in a Jar. Am I looking at the camera? Okay, sorry. This, yeah. this is my first Google Hangout. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with Zen in a Jar, it's actually it's something I do on the side, but I'm about to transition to doing it full time because I love it. But uh, basically, um, create luxury experiences for the mind, body, and space. And what that means is, um, basically, life is very stressful. And what I like to do is create little experiences for myself. And so I used to get, like, a lot of Carol's Daughter and, you know, all kinds of fancy bath products and stuff, right? But, you know, just like with the drinking clean, for me, I started to think about the chemicals and the preservatives that are in some of the things we put on our bodies. Yep. Because um, I'm not a biologist or any, anything of the sort, but I just feel like there's something that we are around on a regular basis that is causing like so many cases of cancer and things like that. So I try to be as natural as possible with, within the things that I can control. So um, I started off making body scrubs like for Christmas, like um, as a handmade gift, and people wanted to start getting them like the following years. They wanted to buy them and give them to other people. I was like, oh, wait, you guys like this. Okay, cool. So from there, <laughs> I would just like start Googling recipes for things. and I mean, it was a whole lot of trial and error. A lot of things did not work out. But, um, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy. So now I make shea butters mm -hmm. um, and sugar scrubs, um, vaginal wash, soy candle, and hair butter, things like that. I can make custom wow. things, too, but for the most part, um, that's what I offer, so. I'll be happy to send you guys something too. I have a yeah. wine set to candle now. Uh oh. Nice. Sold. <laughs> no, I was trying to check out your site and I saw something that said pina colada before it and I was like, I gotta hear the inside scoop on this. So Oh yeah, yeah. That's like one of my best sellers. So like I named the stuff after either Zen terms or people that inspire me. So Wu mm -hmm. is actually my best friend. Her name is Wumi and she's a bartender. And um, she loves pineapple, so I named the pina colada scent after her. But I named some of them after my nieces and stuff Aww. like that. You know? That's awesome. Wait, is she is failing to um, tell you guys that she does kids parties too? She does like, um, like, like little girl spa uh, days and parties and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And where are you, Nikki? Um, oh, I'm you... in, um, I'm in Oxon Hill. With, look, okay, so they just started calling it. National Harbor, Maryland. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you're in the fancy part. part. Oh, okay. I see you. You're in the fancy part. They got this on zip code and everything. Okay. Yeah. I see you. So, we, applied we applied to live here. All the paperwork said, you know, welcome to National Harbor, Maryland. So I checked in on something on Facebook, and it said Oxen Hill. And my sister was like, yeah, you thought you were better than us, didn't you? <laughs> right. How did you? Facebook will always shut you down. <laughs> Bring you yeah. back to reality. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and also, you also write a blog. Wait, and let me get this right. Is it Red Lipstick Chardonnay? Did I say it right? Red Lips and Chardonnay. Uh huh. Yeah. So okay. how did you um how did you start doing that? Because I just I had a lot of thoughts I had to get out of my head. Mm -hmm. Because like I usually mm -hmm. am giving like I'm okay. So I'm the oldest of six, so I'm used to giving like unsolicited advice all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and as I got older, I got that more self aware. Like, like, people do not want to hear from you about everything. You know what I mean? So, what I started doing was um, just writing it out. And with the blog, for me, it's therapeutic because I get really stressed out. Like I said before, like, it's 
there's so much going on in life. My thing is to just focus on what makes you happy and what brings you some peace. Because, mm-hmm. you know, with the stuff that Sarita was talking about, I also have a full-time job and mm-hmm. um, a relationship and, you know, things like that. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, writing, she's, writing in, she's in things. school too, guys. So, oh okay, my. pick your girl, play, girl. girl. Pick Wait. your play. What? You're right. making me sound like I got to get my license. <laughs> right? You're like, so what you doing tomorrow? Well, uh, I got to go buy some groceries tomorrow, but. <laughs> Y'all are so silly. No, I look at it like it's a means to an end. Like I really, I, I want to just relax. In a perfect world, I could just go to school and make candles all day. Mm. But I'm not quite a partner. <laughs> right. I'm like, I just want to light the candles and drink wine. Like <laughs> that's what I want to do. So and watch I Netflix. Love, I love wine so much. Mm-hmm. I, I was so excited when I found the right scent for the Chardonnay candle. Oh my god. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So it's, you uh, mentioned that you first um started um that you first started doing this because um you just wanted to kind of um create something that's like healthy and kind of organic. Like what kind of like what was your first product? And what did you first like kind of mix together to um, get started? My first product was a sugar scrub and it was not very good, but <laughs> it was uh, sugar and some oil from, you know how like your cousins will sell oils on the train and stuff like that? Like, <laughs> Those Melissa cousins. My cousins don't do that. I got some cousins that do that. <laughs> my cousins don't do that. <laughs> Not my cousins. I don't know. I, guess I just own them, but they do it. <laughs> I was present on the train, and I um this I found my first recipe, and I was like, oh, this must be how it's done, and it just it wasn't right. It wasn't right. And my mom was so nice about it. Like she used it, you know, mm. she smiled at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that was the first thing that got me into it. Cause I used to love Carol's daughter, but I was so poor when I was in undergrad. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. Even I'm poor like, now. Right. I'm like yesterday. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, so poor. <laughs> okay, I'm rich in experience. Oh my God, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was. I couldn't afford it. So I was like, let me see if I can make something that smells as good and as is like as much of a nice. Ex- oh, but my wine is kicking in. I'm sorry. But yeah, girl, girl please. please. You better leave. <laughs> So yeah, that's how it that's how it started though. Okay. So what made you keep going? Because like once you did that first thing and your mom was like, Oh girl, oh bless your heart. And so, you know, you know what that means. Like I broke out a little bit, but it's fine. It's right. not bad. I don't really know why the side of my face was turned to purple or like whatever. But, like what made you keep going with that and then start developing other things? Like what made you just, you know, push through? That's a great question, and it, it really didn't hit me till just now. It was my circle. Oh, yeah, mm, that's yeah so I was important. just like surrounded by people that were constantly like my my cousin Nikki had started a jewelry business. Like Vista Print just changed the game. And everybody that ever had one good idea was like an entrepreneur, right? Mm. But the people that really sustained it, I found myself like kind of listening to them and figuring out like, okay, just because the first thing you made sucks doesn't mean that you're not good at this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just if it was easy to do, then everybody would just be doing it. Mm-hmm. So um, for me, it was just like my mom encouraging me and my sister. Like my sister used to do a holiday bazaar or something. And she was like, hey, do you want to sell your stuff at the bazaar? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it again, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it just kind of it grew from there, just with positive encouragement and honest feedback. Mm. Wow. I love it. And where can everybody find your, your, um, your products? Sorry. Um, right now I sell on Etsy, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's just etsycom slash shop slash Zen in a Jar shop. Now I bought the Zen in a Jar domain, mm-hmm. but if I could be completely honest with you all, I don't have the bandwidth to maintain the website. And mm-hmm. Etsy is like ideal for creative people. Like if your whole goal is to just be the creative and sell your stuff, then Etsy is ideal for that. So okay. that's what I. Do. I'm trying to get some interns. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I need help. 
Because I mean, it's a, it's a good thing, but business is like insane. So like last week, I closed the shop. I closed it until today. I just opened it because I just need some time to get caught up on the orders and things like that. So I'm not okay. complaining about it, but it's just. I can't maintain a website and make the products. You know? Now, if I see you on Shark Tank soon, I'm going I'm to fall out. Girl. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a she was on our show <laughs> There is um, another one of our um, members. Her name is Leslie Freelo, and she does Maryland wine tours. But um, anyway, she found her interns on a site. I think it's called interns.com or something like that. So I will I'll send it to you because she sent it to to me as well. But that's Please. where she gets all of her interns. Please, yeah, it's a mess. Christmas is a mess. <laughs> right, that's a good problem to have though. That's true. Really <laughs> worse. You could be like, listen, look at all this time I got. I got this stack of products sitting next to me. Right. Like we could have came live to the show and you had a bunch of sugar scrubs stacked up next to your face. <laughs> nobody bad. <laughs> <laughs> All you looking for is interns. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I had a couple You're of like, hey, what y'all need? I got sugar scrubs. <laughs> I had a couple of experiences, man. I, I know I need some interns. Like, because I only knew the creative part of it. Like, so, okay, I'm a techie at work, but I'm not um, like a business. I didn't go to anybody's school of business. So like people will walk up to me like, yeah, so what's your profit margin and, and you know, what's your business model? And I'm like, um, I sold a lot of shea butter today. You know? oh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it's no better on the other side. So I went to somebody's business school, but I don't have but like one creative bone in my body. So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't it doesn't help unless you got them both. So don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's wow. terrible. Huh. That is crazy. <laughs> oh, so I got three things for Did You Know? Okay. Um, make them saying, easy, Serena. Easy. No, no, these I'm not gonna ask anything. I'm just gonna tell you. I'm just gonna oh. tell you shit. Just like a okay. FYI. Like the more you right. know. Okay. So I'm gonna ask her like, does she like squirrels? Like what's the deal? <laughs> Wait, I do have one question at the end though. It's, it's not a okay. trick question. Okay. So my first did you know is there is a World Organic Wine Trade event in Paris from January 25th through the 27th. What? Yes. What? And I, I don't think I get to Google it. I don't know if there was a price involved. I don't know how that works. But, Tanisha, yes, the 25th through the 27th, it's all organic wine. Oh, and I'm here then. And Boom. you're there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> closer than all of us. Right, like yes. up the street. Yes. Okay. Number two is okay. So normal cork, you know the synthetic corks that you see in your wine bottle. Sometimes they have a blog, a, like a blog. So their last post was one of the trends that you're gonna see this year in wine is, um, what is it? Hold on, let me get it right. Let me get it right. Yes, bourbon barrel fermented wine. So, mm. bourbon soaked in a, a barrel, but they make wine with it after. That makes sense. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So, so they make wine with a barrel. Huh? With the barrels. With yeah. The barrel. okay. It's gonna be aged in barrel. In so uh, bourbon barrel. barrel. Bourbon, bourbon barrel. barrels. Yes. Oh. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, and there is one Fetzer makes oh. one. <laughs> She worked on that brand. That was my baby. <laughs> yeah, and um, they're not even promoting it. Um, they want people to come to it, and I think it's only like twenty dollars on their website. But it's aged in bourbon barrels. So very cool. Yeah, and it's called One Thousand Stories, and this is in Findale. Oh shoot. So that should be interesting. I don't know. I'm curious. Very curious. <laughs> All right, and my last one is, do you know we've been doing Hangouts for two years? Did you guys know that? Two Are years. Are you sure? I, I, I told you I watched the first one. It was dry as hell. That's all right. We've gotten a lot better. <laughs> it makes sense, though, because y'all were doing Hangouts before I started, and I mean, you've you been doing them though. Years. In two years? I don't even think, no. You were. Your hair was really? long. Yes. Two years? Stop yeah. trying to get away from us, Melissa. 2014. Oh, that's what Our it is. first. Old. Girl, I'm telling you. 
Wow. I'm telling you, our first hangout, I wrote it down, was February 11th, 2014. And our first hangout was South African Wines. Oh, wow. I do remember South African Wines. See? Told you. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Well, cheers to that. Okay. Because I honestly did. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. But anyways, so on to our organic wines. Our organic, biodynamic, uh, sustainable Oh, wait, but really quick, before we do that, while we have Nikki on, Nikki, we saw you with a glass. What are you drinking? Please tell us. Oh, I am drinking. Um, yes, this is actually, and hold on, don't judge, because it's in a box. But, oh, wait. no, 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 it's not, it's not what you think. Wait, it's a no, no, no. wine. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got this from the, um, the wine shop over here on the harbor. Mm -hmm. I asked if you guys have any organic or sustainable wine, and this is it. And it's actually really good. Is okay. it good? What is and it? It's a Chardonnay. We love. Mm -hmm. This is a Cal Natural. Yeah. Uh, and it's what 2010 California. Can you guys see? Yeah. So yeah, yeah I yeah. also Googled it before I purchased it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> just writing the story, like. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure. Right. Because <laughs> they'll tell you anything when you're in there. <laughs> yeah, but it's um it's it's sustainable and it is in this box because hold on it's a natural product and there's some other positive stuff. I took some notes, but I don't know what I do. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you like can just tweet them out later. I and this is a sustainable I container, and you know probably some organic grapes or something in there. Okay. Yeah, the grapes were um the grapes were grown. There were sustainable grapes or something like that, but the container was um this is made from natural products. That's right, it's earth friendly. Yeah. <laughs> so um in case you don't know what the definition of biodynamic or organic or like uh sustainable wine is, I have a few definitions. Well, you know, it's we mostly, know you do. No. <laughs> okay. So keep us together. <laughs> According to Wine Folly, um, biodynamic, uh, biodynamic is everything in the universe is interconnected. So they're watching the moon, the stars, the weather patterns, everything, um, everything in the universe. So that's biodynamic. And so um, when the winery that I used to work at, they explained organic as the opposite. Well, not necessarily the opposite of biodynamic, but with biodynamic, they tell you what you can do and what to watch for. Organic tells you what you can't do and what you can't use and what when you grow your grapes, like the pesticides and what you can't use to make your wine, that kind of stuff. Great. So. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I was yeah. one of the wines I used to work on was biodynamic, and we were out there planting cow horns with manure wow. in it and all this stuff. Seriously? That is wow. definitely bio. Oh, that's biodynamic. Mm -hmm. that. mm -hmm. It's a lot of manure. It, a lot of and shit. cycle of the moon, wow. and it's almost like a voodoo kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you just believing in this whole. You know, maybe this might work, and we're gonna yeah. bury this in the ground and mm -hmm. then reuse everything possible. And if the moon does this, then we do this. It's like yeah. a lot of it's crazy. hocus pocus kind of thing. Then, um, California, they got their own sus sustainability act, and that's a whole nother set of rules. I was like, this is a lot. So, yeah, it all depends on the wine and the winemaker and what they choose to do and what rules they're following. So. And also to go um, to kind of piggyback off what you said, also when you look at a bottle of wine that's organic, there is organic wine, and then there's mm -hmm. also wine, wine made from organic grapes. Right. Two different things. You right. can grow your grapes organically, mm -hmm. and then you'll go through the regular winemaking process. Yeah. But then you can also have a completely organic winemaking process. Mm -hmm. Those wines are going to taste two entirely different ways. Exactly. Yes. And there's so many great wines on the market that are made with organic grapes. Mm -hmm. You yes. really got to look at your labels because it's much more difficult to find just a flat out organic, organic wine. That yes, actually it's tastes very difficult. Good. 
that taste good. Oh, wow. Yeah, right add now. that on because organic wine will set you up. It took me a very, very long time to find organic wines that I can actually, like full on organic wines that didn't taste like dirt. Like mm -hmm. literally. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. and not that dirt. French terroir kind of thing where you get that little aroma of mm -hmm. the no, like these would literally taste like the ground, and I'm like, and I paid money for this mm. beyond barnyard. I'm devastated. Yeah. So Melissa, this was your idea, so I want you to tell us about what you're drinking first. And I saw your Twitter pics. Right, I was gonna say I saw the pic. So preparation, girl, she been juicing since like twelve noon. <laughs> you know, now that I got some free time on my hands. Um, yeah, we talk about that. I am you got trying to make your own shea butter and stuff, girl. I am drinking green today. I call it um, what did I call it? Juice of the Earth. Okay. Ooh. Long story, and I actually I think I just tweeted out a link to the recipes, but. Um, so juicing is actually my new obsession. So I've got one of those Vitamix blenders, one of those mm -hmm. Omega slow whatever juicers. Um, and so I'm trying to be healthier. I've been doing this, you know, for the last probably six, seven months or so. So I threw in for the juice, um, let's see, collard greens. And Tanisha, this goes to what we were saying, what's on sale at the grocery store? Uh, <laughs> yeah. vegetables. <laughs> vegetables are on sale. <laughs> Yeah. Melissa, do you live in the D.C. area? I used to. So I used to live in Maryland, and I live in Virginia, in Richmond now. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I met these ladies up in D.C., actually. So, yeah. um, But let's see, what did I throw together? So collard greens, kale, cucumber, celery, apple, lemon, and ginger. Oh, that's okay. Good. That it sounds good. So good. So I used enough to make about 20 ounces of juice because I got to have like my 12 ounces to drink in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then, so I got to play around with the extras. So I decided, because um, I don't think you can ever mess up a margarita. So I was like, I'm going to start basic. So I made a mezcal margarita. So put in some mezcal, some orange liqueur, agave nectar. I needed something that had sweet in it because, yeah. Yeah. you know, apple only yeah. does so much to juice. Yeah. And then yeah. um, some lime juice, so it went really good. And so I made yeah. You need some margarita. products, some citrus. Exactly. <laughs> and then I added like four ounces of the juice. Let me tell you, you can drink your collard greens all day. <laughs> Girl, bye. Because I would love to drink some collard. <laughs> <laughs> so right, it's funny, like really you guys are laughing, but on the cocktail side, so I'll be really honest, with spirits... I don't really care if it's organic or not. I know that's mm -hmm. unpopular to say, but there yeah. are plenty of organic vodkas, and we've got you know local potatoes on this thing, and you know. Mm -hmm. we can all that. But at the end of the day, alcohol, you know, liquor isn't that good for you to start with. Mm -hmm. So I figure the best thing to do is if I'm already going to have something that's not great, I need to have it with something that is great for me, so it kind of balances out. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went the cocktail direction, and for me, it's all about. I guess I would say whole foods or raw foods, like this idea of eating things that aren't too processed. Mm -hmm. so that's why I went to Juice, and it was really funny. Before we did this hangout, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. Do you see this cocktail in my, my phone? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so I don't see it. Hold on. I'm sorry? Put it back it's up. Okay. Like popsicle sticks. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw that. So I went to happy hour today, and it was sort of this compilation between a cold-pressed juice company and a popsicle company. Oh, wow. So they did like a beet and pineapple shrub, like fresh beet, fresh pineapple. They made it into a shrub, added it with gin, um, some what? rose garnish, and Domaine de Canton with a ginger popsicle in it. What? what? A ginger popsicle? Yeah. That sounds so good. <laughs> it was freaking delicious. Wow, so anyway, yeah, it looks I was good. Say, there are so many things, you know, you're starting to see these kind of cocktails pop up. Um, I don't know if you guys have been to Rasika West End in yeah. DC. They made mm -hmm. an amazing cocktail. It just had gin, celery juice, like fresh juiced celery juice, some sage on top, I think it was. Or no, it was dill. Dill on top. I mean, it just there's some really creative drinks that are coming along with kind of juiced cocktails, you know, fresh. Mm -hmm vegetables in the cocktails that are going well beyond beets. So I was super excited to kind of play around in the kitchen. So yeah. 
Wow. Well, <laughs> well, how do you follow up that? Right. I'm like, well. <laughs> I'm drinking the most natural thing ever. I have a nice glass of water, and it is from the earth. And um, yeah, my wine is actually uh, it's. I can't show you the bottle because, like I told you, it's across the room. And um, but it's made from <laughs> organic grapes. Water, girl. It's Wait. Italian. <laughs> I mean, I'm drinking water now because it's three. A.M. Mm. So yes, I'm drinking water. But um, no, it's an Italian wine. I, after one of y'all talk, I'll get up and get it. You know, I'm not gonna be okay. this trifling. So we go <laughs> to read it. All right, I'll, I'll go. All right, I sound so, so bold. Um, I'm, I'm kind of double fisting right now. So I have a green juice as well. But, um, so this is pear, oh, cucumber, no. ginger. And I need a little more sweetness, so I added, um, I juiced the mango. So I oh, juiced all these things. And it's a sage leaf in there. But um, And I added just like a little bit of gin. Because it's so light mm -hmm. that if you, I mean, the more alcohol you put in there, all you're going to taste is alcohol. So just a little drop, just a little few drops of gin, and it's it's pretty it's pretty damn good. I like it. So um, Recipe. Recipe. that's really a thing we can do. We can just we can add liquor to our juices then. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. I wasn't and sure. <laughs> oh yeah, Nikki. They told me back and forth. Um, I think one hangout ago, I was on a liquor hiatus, so I had two little shots, and one was of like tomato juice. They were like, "Well, where's the vodka? You know, where's your vodka in your drink?" I was like, "Geez, mm. I can't <laughs> hide with you, ladies." Because <laughs> I've had my juicer probably for about three years now, so um, it's it's still kicking. It's getting a little slow, but it's it's still kicking. <laughs> but um, yeah, it made it. I had to strain it because this can be really really thick. So I did have to use a strainer for it to become drinkable. drinkable. But um, so yeah. So but this is my wine. So my wine is Greek. Ooh. So um, and I think I pronounced this Rhodites. And so that's the grape, and this is a Greek wine, and it's made with organic grapes. It's not an organic wine. It's just made with organic grapes. And um, I had this once before. It's probably about $14. Um, Y'all know I work in Rockville. I work really fucking far, and I go to the wine shops out there. So, um, <clears throat> so I found a really good wine shop, and they have this. It's $14, and I really like it. I had it with, um, I had it with mussels. What? I had it with mussels and it was awesome. Did so, you cook? You cooked the mussels? Yes. Oh. Mhm. Mm yeah, it was just yeah, it was little herbs, olive oh. oil. So okay. Very simple. But um, so yeah, so I went back and got I got another bottle and that's what I'm really drinking tonight. But um, that's um, that's pretty much it for me. But but yeah, double fisting. Wow. Hmm. So Tanisha, we ready for your wine now? Yeah. Okay, so here it is. Can you all see that? It's no. the Obafa. It's from Toscana. Oh, Italy. okay. Wow. And it is made from organically grown grapes. It's a 2012. And um, it's an IG, IGT wine, which means it's not quite AOC, and they may or may not want it to go to that level, but, you know, that's up to them. Um, and this is someone that discovered, I'm about to read you the back of the um, label. This premium wine is the product of a state harvested, organically grown grapes from the Poggio Alcazone Vineyard. And that was their home during production. And they actually did, the, um, they filmed the fall wine harvest under the warm Tuscan sun when they um, did this wine. So, hmm. yes. Interesting. It sounds oh. good though. It does. It really does. Yeah, they did this. They wanted to document this. Um, their friend, which is a surfer slash artist slash environmentalist, on a quest to reconnect with their Italian roots and to prove the existence of world class surfing in the Mediterranean. And so, when they were looking for their Italian surfing subculture, they also discovered a community of people that were growing um, organic grapes and then making them into wine. And um, that is said one. Huh. Nice. Very yes. nice. Mm -hmm. 
12.5 percent <laughs> alcohol and um yeah it's actually a very nice wine when it comes to um italian wine it's something that i could actually drink on its own a lot of italian wines are kind of heavy for me to drink on their own uh -huh. and i need um italian food to go with them but this one is a little bit lighter uh, like i said 12.5 percent alcohol nice um Strong tannins, but not those really um, harsh ones that you get from maybe like a Barolo or Barbaresco or something like that. But um, it's very enjoyable. Something that you can have like with just your regular spaghetti meatballs, your lasagna. It's nice with pizza. It's um, I enjoyed it a lot. I am I mean, on I, a diet. I am. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hungry. Okay, so you can have it with. You ain't got no more popcorn, girl. No, you right. ain't. <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to think of like what you could have this with. Maybe like some mozzarella. No, that's probably not on your. No, that's on your diet. Probably like you can't have mozzarella, right? Mozzarella. So one cheese stick. You could have this. Not the fried one, but just the one mozzarella. <laughs> okay. Stick, probably. <laughs> or you could go with my earlier selection and drink yourself a big glass of water. Mm. That's true. You're right. Because they're as organic as you can get. I'm telling you, it's the new year. People still get their Big Mac and their Diet Coke. So this is like you can have the big, you know, spaghetti mm -hmm. bowl and then have your, you know, organic wine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't trip because I am a drinker of Diet Coke with my Big Macs. And it's not even about, and for me, here's the thing. It's not even about the lack of calories and trying to, like, save on calories. Regular Coke actually has too much sugar for me. So it's too sweet. Diet Coke is less sweet. So that's why I drink it. So Diet Coke or Coke Zero, it's less sweet. Yeah, so it doesn't have anything to do with the calories. Just it's a lot less sugar. Well, that's part of the whole drinking clean thing, though. Like this, you know, no artificial ingredients, you know, less sugars, things of that nature. Those are still things I know in the cocktail world that people are paying attention to, you know, when they're trying to drink better. Mm-hmm. I know. I also drink better being here because there are a lot of things that are in America. I mean, you're in Paris, really. Aren't. But no, I mean, as far as like just regular stuff. That. Right, I know. Seriously. <laughs> but no, I'm talking simple stuff like Coke. Like the Coca-Cola tastes different here mm. than it does. Um, oh, gotcha. And, gotcha. and so just regular like stuff that they allow in the products here is, you know, they're much more strict and stringent on things they allow than they are in the mm. States. That's interesting. We were, we were talking about water, and you know how in America, like, there's fluoride in the water. But here, they're like, why would you put fluoride in the water? Why would you do that? And then I look at all their mouths, and I'm like, well. Mm. Well, I hate to digress, but did y'all see the water situation in Flint, Michigan? Yeah. What's happening? People What's can't drink on? water. They cannot drink their water. Mm. Oh, so it's like all Deer Park all the time. Like, all bottles. <laughs> the government handing out Deer Park. You know, Deer Park. Oh gosh. It's crazy. Yeah. And that's what it made me think of when you were talking about fluoride. Well, who knows what else is in our water? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even mess with it. So you brought up teeth, and I recently read this article about. Um, <laughs> so, so did you know that you're not so, you're supposed to wait an hour? Say you have a glass of wine and you're about to go to bed. You're supposed to wait an hour before you brush your teeth, because. Whoops. You know, it's yeah. It, there's there are chemicals and there there are chemicals in the wine. Plus, on top of the toothpaste, you can fit. Well, I've done it before, like brush my teeth after having a glass of wine, and you can like I can feel myself brushing off my enamel. My oh, teeth will find, they all feel so rough because yeah, I'm yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. And then I read the article and they said you should wait an hour. I'm really like running my tongue over my teeth. I, I just did the same thing. I'm so concerned yeah. about my enamel. <laughs> Yes, I have done it. I drink so much water. When your enamel is gone, it's gone. Like, you're like, not getting so, so, that back. Unless you get, like, like veneer, like, like you're done. Yeah just, yeah, just have your wine and go to bed, brush your teeth in the morning. And then, I don't know if you guys saw the finale to um to uncork the Esquire show where they follow all the um oh, you anyway, the finale. I, I won't I won't give it a, I won't tell you what happened or anything, but they were saying that if they have to taste they will get up and they won't brush their teeth because it affects how their taste, how their taste goes. So they'll get they probably up. Probably not tell anybody that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell anyone that. <laughs> they, <laughs> they'll get up and they'll, you know, they're wa you know, washing everything, but they'll swish around like some Sauvignon Blanc in their mouth, something acidic, and then they'll go about their day. 
And Ladies, I hear a business opportunity here. Dental products for wine lovers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, no, it's for real, serious. because they already came out with those wine wipes, which are like clutch for some people, because yeah. I've been at wine tastings and seen them with the wine wipes. I'm like, you actually need some. You, mm. I don't oh. understand <laughs> what it means with their teeth. I'm like, you look like homeless. Like, why does your mouth <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so wine wipes definitely help. So that is a good idea. Like if you have like some kind of something that people, because mm -hmm. I would just imagine you just want your mouth to fit. Because even if you just swirl some Savion Blanc around in your mouth and mm -hmm. then like go to this tasting, like I just still wouldn't feel right. Like your teeth yeah. are rough and you just. Yeah. But yep. Mm hmm. Crazy. Crazy. I'm also not that serious a taster. I probably shouldn't say that live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> But when I worked at Black Ankle, people would come in. If they came in like 12 o'clock when we opened, some of them would be like, damn, I still have toothpaste like, on my tongue. I still, I still can't How take much that. toothpaste are they using? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, what? So, yeah, I, I, can, I can believe it. I can believe it. Man, forget onions and garlic. It's all about right. the yeah. Yep. Yeah. Depending on what you had the night before, you might not be able to pull that trick. Like, yeah. oh, let me just not brush. <laughs> <laughs> Out of luck. <laughs> right. Like, let me just show up. Taste this wine. But that's mm -hmm. the best excuse. If anybody tells me I got bad breath, oh, I'm going wine tasting. Mm -hmm. so I didn't want to ruin my. Palate. Oh, you might want to tell them you've already been, so oh, then it makes it a little better. Like I've already been. <laughs> I couldn't brush. I've been wine tasting. <laughs> like, no, that's Chardonnay you smell and organic green. Mm -hmm. That's okay. yeah. You smell biodynamic wine all the time. Get out of Serena's wine. Why have y'all let me in this show tonight? <laughs> oh, wait. So, I have a question. So, does anybody have any, like, resolutions or any like wine rela related resolutions for this year or just any fucking goals I don't know just tell me <laughs> it's really not that deep just tell me <laughs> okay so what am I and it actually does kind of go along with what we've been talking about so not necessarily drinking clean but with eating clean I said I was going to go oh, to more okay. farmers markets since I have access to like a crap ton of them here um, I want to go to more um, of the farmers markets like, I can get fresh stuff in the grocery store, but um, now since I'm getting a little nice with my French, I think mm -hmm. I can actually go and make some transactions live with some people face-to-face -face and get the stuff mm -hmm. that I need mm -hmm. and not, you know, be set up. Because before, I'd have been trying to order something and would have ended up with a whole bunch of stuff that I ain't want. But... <laughs> And too much of it. But yeah, now, you know, I know some fruits and vegetable names. So <laughs> I still don't know my measurements because a kilo still means nothing to me. I don't know. I think of drugs. Like, I don't think. Oh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, but yeah, I want to start getting more like the freshest of the fresh vegetables that are, you know, local. So, yeah, that's one of my resolutions. Nice. Awesome. What about you, Nikki? I want to um, I want to continue. Okay, my favorite thing to do is to go on road trips with my best friend to like different areas of wine country and just drink all the wine. And I want to make more time to do that. Uh. And I want to exercise more. And when I saw on Facebook, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a run. Where if you run, you can run in. Um, who is the wine god? Diane. Diane. Oh, I'm done. Never mind. But, <laughs> <laughs> I but, love um, it. You can run in a toga. Oh wow! And there's un unlimited wine at the end of the run. It's on the harbor, like in yeah. The park. I saw that. I didn't I know about the toga part, but I saw that. Yeah, I was like, wait, this is a thing. 
So I want to do more things like that. I do. Wait, so how far are you got? This sounds real. It's kind of like a I one. This is like a three K. Like, this sounds real Caucasian <laughs> right now. How far you got to run? Because they they call it they call it a five K, but anything at the National Harbor is not really a five K. No. Um, it's not. Guys, it's like not. a three K. Hate to tell you, I yeah. did race there once. Mm. <laughs> I made a one K in my life. Woo! The ugly Christmas <laughs> sweater run out here, and we weren't running that long. We just ran for the beer. Exactly. <laughs> if they give you a glass to start with, you can make it. So, <laughs> I can see Tanisha sprinting out for half a mile, like give me right. my wine, give me my free wine. Is that it? Oh, oh yeah, that's my only goal. Oh, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> resolutions. I don't know if I have any, so I freed up extra time. So check on that one. Um, honestly, I really do want to drink cleaner. Um, I'm doing a seminar in March about clean, sort of the rise of clean cocktails. Um, I mean, ultimately, you know, to sit here this time next year, you know, I, I want to be a professional drinker just like I am, and I want mm -hmm. people to pay me to come speak mm -hmm. about what's up here, to be honest. Um, so, I mean, honestly, the only thing is, you know, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, don't let juicing, you know, cause me to go to the poorhouse. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, just trying to be a little bit more healthy. But it's crazy. I mean, you know, Nikki, what she was talking about, just having time. And time is a wonderful thing. You know, these mm -hmm. last couple of days, I'm taking walks. I walked two and a half miles to that happy hour with that cocktail <laughs> I showed you. Um, oh, that's serious. Walking in January. Exactly. Oh, I mean, it's not that. It, was, right. it, was, it was 45 <laughs> degrees outside, so. Yeah. I'm not, but, yeah. I'll be struggling. But see, just having time, I mean, it's it took like 40 minutes to walk or 35 minutes to walk, but having time to walk before you go indulge and, mm -hmm. you know, just those things, that's, I mean, for me, just having some time to explore and do some cool things. You might see me out there in a toga running, too, though. <laughs> That sounded like a whole lot of fun. Yeah, take pictures. Take pictures so I know it's real. I'll tag you. Swirl oh sweet. Snapchat. Can I ask you a very real question after everybody's done? Sure. 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 Okay. Cool. Did everybody answer? Oh, I didn't. Um, oh, yeah. Whoops. The only thing I want to do is... Um, really touch up on blind tasting because I've never really done it in a professional setting before. So I was trying to find tasting groups. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty much an introvert, so I really don't want to do it, but I feel like I need to do it. So I don't know. We'll see. But I, I do, I'm thinking about just going to a wine shop and say, um, give me a wine that's under $20, wrap it in a plastic bag, and just let me pay for it, and I'll just pour it at home and see what it is. That kind of thing, you know. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but yeah. Um, that's a really, that's a really good guy. idea, though. Oh, yeah, is really? that is. They used to have um, classes at the Capital Wine School. Uh, oh, they do. Used to do. They do um, it's, a class yeah. on blind tasing. Yeah, it's and just the one. It's a hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's okay. just the one. But he's really good at blind tasting. Is tasing, he? Though. Yeah. Okay. Jay is a beast, and um, also, um. Oh gosh, what's the guy's name who used to help? David Denton. You probably have heard of his wife, Maria Denton, who works for LVMH. But David and they're both CWEs. David Denton, he used to be I can't, Charlie Palmer. There's some. Oh, mm -hmm. He is an absolute beast at blind tasting. He mm -hmm. is a, a phenomenal at blind tasting. And they mm -hmm. used to have a tasting group. So, um, I don't know. I think we're friends on Facebook. I know I am with Maria, so I can um, reach out to her and ask her, does she still have anything like that? Okay. Because they actually had um, one on the weekends. I know the one that I sent you before, mm -hmm. um, that one's during the week, so that's yeah. probably a little harder for you. But yeah. their, their group actually started for people that are studying for the psalm exams. Gotcha. And so, you know, they work in the evenings since they're in the oh, restaurant. okay. Industry, yeah, so. that makes sense. Okay. But yeah, if you want like regular ongoing practice, then your yeah, tasting group is the best way for you. But yeah. um, just to get like some really good basic um, knowledge about it, about blind tasting, Jay's class is really good. Because yeah. a lot of it isn't necessarily knowing a whole lot. Well, I mean, it's knowing a whole lot, but it's not all taste. A lot mm -hmm. of it is also deductive reasoning. Yeah. Like once you start sure. tasting things, you you know start pulling things away. Like, okay, I know it is. It tastes like this, so I know mm -hmm. it isn't this. It is not this. It is not. This. <clears throat> yeah. 
Right, like it tastes like apples and pear, so okay, and it's white, so I know it's not Merlot and Cabernet. So mm -hmm. like, you know, you start there and then just start yeah. pulling stuff away and seeing what you have left. Yeah. That or Serena, it sounds crazy, but start your own. I mean, I was looking for booze chats, um, you know, whiskey gotcha. chats and all this stuff, and people on Twitter were telling me to start one because they can't find one either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you can't find it or if it doesn't work for your schedule, don't be, yeah. you know, don't be shy. There are going to be some folks that are going to want to join you. Don't uh, be shy. Who are you talking to? You oh, talk I'm an introvert. I can say it. Girl. So. Okay. Right. You talk to Sarita. Don't be shy. Sarita, you talk to nobody else. Rock with, and drink wine and do this. <laughs> I'll be just right. fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I know. I know I need to rip the Band-Aid off. But anyway. <laughs> That's you got it like halfway off. You started just just you doing Girl, this. Let me tell years. you what Tanisha will like... do. Let me t oh, Tanisha. Oh, <laughs> Tanisha. Let me try to accidentally hang she up will... on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> what? She what would I'm say, "Okay, girls, so I got a friend coming to DC, mm -hmm. and I I be staring at the phone like, yep, well that's nice. That's wonderful. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> she'd be like, oh well, I thought you could show her what? <laughs> nope. Show her what? A stranger? <laughs> I, did I did that to you twice. <laughs> she did. She did this shit to me twice. She, I, I did like I them. Did I, that to you. I did. I did. They've been good people. Liking them, so. She said they're good people. I, I, I already know how you are, so I'm yeah. not gonna just have you around like a clown. Mm. So, like, it's gonna yeah. be a decent person. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she got she me though. Like, oh, oh, come on, come on. You but know, anyway. I get it, Salida. Mhm. Mm <laughs> yeah, I had to get out of that because, like, my circle is limited. Because I'm like, look, I gotta talk to the five people who speak English. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get to pick and choose. Right. <laughs> you are stuck with your circle. Right. That's so crazy. And some people I had to put out. And I'm like, you know what? I just stay in my apartment by myself because y'all, mm -mm, I'm not that desperate because you're table crazy. For one. Table for one. Listen. <laughs> I'll do it. But... So, Nikki, Nikki, you had a question though. Oh, sorry. Okay, so here's what I wanted to ask you guys. Like, I just, uh, we can curse, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Ask me that. <laughs> Girl, drink clean. Not I, our throat's not clean. Just drink it clean. <laughs> How do you guys manage um, enjoying wine but maintaining like your fitness? How do you deal with that? I didn't. I'm about to say, you can't do it. 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 I was just wondering who was going to say it first. Ain't nobody said it up. He's lined out. I'm like, all right, that's all you need to see. Yeah. You ain't uh, seeing no full body shots. <laughs> it's hard, though. Like, I mean, and I, I will say... <laughs> I have looked up to Sarita for this for a long time. She is, I mean, she's always got a plate full of some healthy food, she some, does. some she seafood, does. some salad. I'm sorry, wow. I'm sorry. Did anybody else grow up a fat kid? Uh, I'm oh. sorry. I, I, I had no choice. I had no choice. I have no, I have no choice. I'm lying. Okay. No. I, I'm naturally a big girl. I'm naturally a chubby girl. I know that. I know that about me. So I know that there's some there's some shit okay. I can't eat. I, there's there's walk in no, your truth. There is no way walk in your truth. I can't go through life and not exercise because I'm just gonna be big and fat. That's just I, you know, some people like naturally skinny and do whatever. I got a girlfriend. I'm not gonna say her name, but she's been naturally skinny her whole life. She didn't have two kids. I'm like, girl, what? Wow, that's crazy. But anyway, um, I know. but no, I um, well, and I, I studied health in college, so <sighs> once you see the behind, and I used to work at a community clinic, and I've seen the behind the scenes of not taking care of yourself and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I do yoga in a box, and Danita actually oh, got me sitting for a while. Um, so I do what I can. I can see you now, glass of Chardonnay and downward dog. Well, there you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so you weren't you doing some, weren't you doing some wine and yoga classes, Sarita? What you say? Yeah. Weren't you doing some wine and yoga classes? 
I do, and I am actually scheduled there monthly. So I'm doing monthly tastings at um, yeah, at their they have three locations. So I'm gonna rotate and do um, monthly tastings. So you're at, telling at me clean, clean cocktails can work? Oh well, the thing <laughs> is, totally my first <laughs> see the thing is, <laughs> let me tell you how I dropped the mic on them though. So <laughs> my first tasting, my first tasting, I did a juice. I did like a cucumber mint juice. And oh my God, those yogis, they just ate it up. They're like, oh, well, you got wine too? Yep, they were crazy. They were more crazy about the juice than they were the wine. So <clears throat> that's what like keeps me coming back. So they know what I do. And usually I make little snacks. Like I made, oh, wow. I made like just black bean brownies. Um, they're just brownies made out of black beans instead of flour. Like little stuff I find on Pinterest. So, <clears throat> and then, like you know, it. pair it with the wine and. There I am. So they love me now. So that's it. Wow. There's nothing to be said after that. I know. We're just like, and. The rest of us okay. just try to go to the gym, Nikki, occasionally, when <laughs> we can. Yeah, the only way I lose weight is if I don't drink wine every day. That is so hard. Yeah, right, and I feel like you just cursed at me. So, like, I don't even know what that life is like. <laughs> If it's a night I don't drink wine, it's because I drank a beer. <laughs> <laughs> or champagne. Or <laughs> You guys are amazing. I'm done. You guys are amazing. <laughs> or I had a cocktail. Like. I know. You just rotate. <laughs> <laughs> but I know a lot, of, a lot of fit people who work in the wine industry, they do something. They run or they, I don't know. They do something. They do something physical. So Yeah. I have a, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of colleagues actually that ran marathons, half mm -hmm. marathons, yeah. um, just really fit people. And I actually, there was a guy I knew a couple companies ago, you know, he, he'd been sort of a career drinker sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, more on the alcohol side, but I mean, he had diabetes. The doctor was like, you got to cut back on alcohol. And it was one of the hardest things for him to do was to work in an alcohol company and yeah. then pay attention yeah. to when he drank alcohol. So, you know. I mean, it just, yeah. it's all about moderation. I mean, yeah. I don't drink every day. Ironically, I used to, but I don't need more. Um, you know, after I did those, I've told, like, Tanisha and Sarita, after I did 109 days with wine, um, 109 wines, 109 days, my liver knew better after that. It was like, <laughs> okay, day 110, it's over. Mm. So, but yeah. Just, I remember that episode. Try to, oh, yeah. Try to just get a smaller glass, too. That was the other thing that worked for me. So even though I made a margarita, I got a smaller coupe glass mm -hmm. instead of getting a cocktail glass. So yeah. I felt a little bit better Yeah. You know, about my quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got that. Just like how they tell you if you have a smaller plate, you'll eat less. All you do is I'm like, discipline. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat less that round, but like I'm going back <laughs> five times to find that little that. ass plate. <laughs> so if I have eight of these tiny glasses, <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> like six tiny glasses, I should just have my regular two of the regular glass. <laughs> the so thing that saves me now is I'm more active because I don't work a nine to five, so I'm not just sitting at a desk all day, and I yeah. don't have a car. I literally walk everywhere or train it everywhere, and I don't have an elevator in my building, so that actually changes the game a lot. Um, people say, oh, you get used to it. No, I'm still out of breath by the time I get to my apartment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a game. I get to the oh, top. I went to a friend's house over the weekend, and she lives on the sixth floor. I literally could talk to her or say hi when I walked in. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> "See, you cut it out of my circle." Uh, I'm like, "This is so dumb." <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> And the moral of the story, live on a high floor. <laughs> yes. Live on a high floor, drink all you want. Drink all you want and just don't have an elevator. Get one of those, you know, brownstones in New York. Just walk yes. the stairs. Do not, yeah, don't live on the second floor. 
Four and up. Four and up. Yes. Oh, it's so funny. I'm trying to think of some real, like, you know, it is January. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I could never participate in dry January. I can tell you that right uh, now. I don't know how that goes. I think it's retarded. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just started thinking as opposed to what? Wet January? I don't, I don't quite get it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't think there is an easy answer. Typically, the one thing I do do, you know, smaller glasses and all, I will trade food for alcohol. So if I am counting calories, mm -hmm. yeah. I will. Yeah. Uh, there I we mean, go. <laughs> yeah. So I will scale back on my, my dinner food to mm -hmm. have a cocktail or to have a glass of wine or champagne. Mm -hmm. So probably not what most would recommend, but I try to keep it in the right calorie zone regardless yeah. of how I get my calories. Yeah. So. Well, the thing about me also is I don't have much of a sweet tooth. I mean, you guys know I don't really like sweet wine, so I usually can skip dessert. So. Yeah. See, no, well, that's, that's not my gift. No. <laughs> that is not my. Yeah. That's not my ministry. <laughs> that's not your ministry. Oh my God. Woo! <laughs> On a dessert, I sit my ass in a restaurant, and I'm like, "Oh, I'll have another Chardonnay for a dessert, please. Thank you." Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you went right in the work. I was great right at dessert time. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's I'm right. Get cheese coffee, and wine. Thank you. No. Cheese or plate, cheese plate, and wine. Right, cheese, cheese plate and wine. Cheese plate and wine. Cheese plate and wine. Now that what I wouldn't be able to turn down, like See. a cheese plate. Listen, I had um, I went out with a friend yesterday, and we went to this place called Pom Van Pom et Fromage. So bread. Oh, this was that cheese plate on Instagram? Oh, that was another cheese plate when I was at a friend's house. Okay. Last night we went out for fondue. <sighs> Listen, man. Listen, and then had cheesecake <laughs> for dessert. I'm like, so I'm just gonna be all cheesed out. <laughs> I'm glad you're not lactose intolerant. That would be a problem. Oh, it would, I would have to move. Like, I wouldn't be able to live here. It wouldn't have worked out. I'd have been back in America. <laughs> no, the cheese plate you're talking about, Melissa, that was at a friend's house. And I'm like, this actually could, would, I mean, I could just eat this and be done. But that was the dessert. Oh. No, that wasn't even a dessert course. That was a cheese course. We had um, an appetizer first. We had foie gras. Oh. And then we had coco vol. Wow. And uh, a gratin potato. <laughs> so I'm going to steal your circle of friends because you have cheese plates and six floors and all kinds of stuff. Listen, that's what they do here. Like when you go to eat, like they'll have 70 courses. And you'll be just like, okay. And this was a friend cooked it. Like she wow. made it all. So, and then we had the cheese plate and then we had um, an apple tart with ice cream. Mm. Wow. Yeah, the cheese wow. plate was the last thing I could take a picture of because they also had wine with each course. So I just, it was just a special wow. day. Special <laughs> night. <laughs> so special not, night. not to totally derail the conversation, but it made me think of something. What are you guys feeling about gluten free? Like, it feels like everything. <laughs> if it's a beer, <laughs> it's a liquor, it's all gluten free now. <laughs> So, I'm going to leave that to somebody else because I can't speak on it. Because I, you know, call me ignorant or whatever. I can't even actually say what gluten is to know if I want to be free of it. That's right. She spoke a word. She spoke a word. So, no, seriously. I mean, there are people that are gluten intolerant, but I'm finding yeah. my friends that are not there gluten are. intolerant are trying to drink gluten free. <laughs> I you, know we gotta like, extra. you know we got to do everything extra and take everything to the 10th power here. And that's exactly <laughs> what we're doing. That's why everybody's eating fucking kale now. Like, really? So long kale been around? <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Even yeah, though I love it, I mean, we've been eating greens for years. I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, yeah. um, but I do have a friend that suffers from, um, she's definitely gluten intolerant and you know, when I'm over a house, we're eating gluten-free pasta, and it's fine, you know. So every now and then, I'll, like, like get a little inkling, like, oh, I'll have gluten-free. Like, like, well, bitch, you don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need, like, you don't need that. <laughs> Stop being extra. You don't need it. You can eat gluten. You have no problem with gluten. 
that it's a lot of people who actually do need it, and you taking it from them. Right, right, exactly. It's like when it's vegetarians and we get pizza, but everybody be trying to eat the vegetarian part of the pizza, and so the mm-hmm. actual vegetarian be like, "So why do I eat?" We be right. like, "Oh, uh, mm-hmm. we'd ate yeah. up all the green pepper mushroom." <laughs> <laughs> we like, "Oh, sorry, no. it didn't have sausage on it." We sorry. But no, I'm, I'm totally part. okay with gluten. <laughs> I am okay with gluten. It's fine by me. Fine by me. I feel like okay. That's a whole nother rant. <laughs> Never mind. I'm gonna just. Well, you might as well go ahead. Yeah, let's hear it. So I just feel like there are a lot of intolerances that people have built up as of late. Like, I feel like back in, like, when I was growing up, we just had to eat it. Like, or was I just intolerant and didn't know it? Mm-hmm. But, like, all the dairy, all the gluten, all the whatever, like, if you ain't eat it, then you just go hungry, and you go to bed hungry, <laughs> and that's just what your mother told you. So, <laughs> but now all these special, I mean, I get it if you're allergic to, like, nuts, and, like, you literally your throat mm-hmm. will close up and you die. But, like... <laughs> I can't process milk or gluten is a problem. Like, where is this coming from? Because my mother, she is lactose intolerant, and her mama made her drink milk her entire life. Oh, my God. Oh, that was rough. There was no such thing as lactose intolerant. Mm. It wasn't enough of intolerant. You drink milk or you just go to bed hungry. (laughs) You drink milk. Uh, That's what I'm giving you. She didn't figure out till later, well, I guess it's the milk making me sick. But she drank it because it was milk. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> and there are now other options. And like after I um, I think I watched I watched a documentary or something on milk, and was oh. like, okay, well now I actually can't drink milk anymore because I'm like oh. that actually that process is gross. So I'm like, I just can't do it. Ladies, ladies, ladies! I was watching CNN today. They are doing something. I don't know if it's come out or not about the antibiotics in our food. Yeah, oh, sorry, that's got a lot of stuff in it. I was like, oh my goodness. And now I know why people go vegan because they're I can't, talking I can't about deal with this. Yeah. <laughs> they're talking about all the antibiotics in our meat and then it's gonna cause, you know, resistant superbugs and all this stuff. Yeah. I was like, there goes the beef. And you then um, I have a girlfriend who was telling me to watch this um, documentary on GMO on Netflix. I was you probably like, don't want to see it though. Yeah, I was some like, stuff don't know. I'm like, you want me to give up my soy latte? No, I'm gonna walk, so walk in my. Really? I'm gonna walk in my ignorance. I'm I'm just need to. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just walking in my ignorance, and I'm fine with that. Hmm. How do y'all feel about Chipotle? Wow. I'm really you know, sad see. about it. I'm hurt. Wow. Yeah, they might be about to shut down soon. They saved me some money though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No joke. I went mm. to go in a Chipotle, and my husband was like. Uh, didn't you see them on the news? I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I went and got back in the car. I was like, that's all right. I'll eat something at home. <laughs> don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. But I'm anti Chipotle and McDonald's, so oh, I can't really. I can't even do it. Everybody got quiet for real. I am. Yeah, I am. I, I eat McDonald's. I feel like it makes I make me feel better like better no, I eat McDonald's. I, am. I do too. I am. And they have free Wi-Fi, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for some McDonald's French fries. I am not gonna lie. I can't even. I can't even tell you the last time I've been to McDonald's. I, I can't even tell you. I, would I can. Fast too. <laughs> <laughs> About three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just had a thing. McDonald's. I'm really. I'm really. Uh, as a whole, I'm really anti-fast food, but I will go to a Chick-fil-A, but. Anything oh. else, I really don't, you know. I did hit up Chick Fil A when I was home and just mm-hmm. loved every minute of it. I was yeah. just. My brother was like, "Slow down." I was like, "No, <laughs> I got to get it in my life." <laughs> it was bad. It was so bogus. You I had like a list of food I needed to eat. I had a list. I had a list of things I had to eat. <laughs> did you get your Popeyes? Oh. I actually did not go to Popeyes. I ate, but I ate Harold's chicken like every other day. Oh, okay. Y'all have those there? Yeah. Every function I went to at home, like, they had fried chicken. So I was just eating fried chicken, fried okay. um, catfish. It was just Ooh. heaven. I, just, <laughs> I hadn't eaten that much fried chicken in my life. And they're like, oh, Tanisha, you want to take some home? I do. Thank you. <laughs> wait, 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 though. Can I tell y'all that, um, no, I didn't give up carryouts, though, because that, that would be oh. a problem. But have y'all been to Hip Hop Chicken? 
I can't do it. I my can't Lord. do it. The name of girl. Me. I will slap you over some catfish. My education won't allow me to do this. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. It's really called hip hop chicken. Hip hop chicken. Hip hop chicken. Hip hop chicken. Yes. And it when is I located where? I mean, okay. So let me let me tell you, it's. The <laughs> <laughs> I mean, inquiring minds want to know. I don't even have a chop down here in Virginia. <laughs> um, everything is fried. Everything is fried. They even got like some sort of like broccoli and cheese fried ball situation. Anyway, everything on the menu is fried. But to really experience hip hop chicken, you get the catfish nuggets and you ask for the crack seasoning. Oh, catfish nuggets are the crack. Bomb. The, crack the crack seasoning. You ask for the crack. Make sure they put the crack seasoning on there. All of it. Okay. It's like a fancy seasoned salt, but. It just takes the catfish nuggets to another level. I guarantee you those people have made more money in this last week than we will. Right? With some crack seasoning. Oh, my God. goodness. Oh my what you gotta do is come up with like one thing. You come up with one like one. give it a name. Crack season. Crack like people want to come call crack season. Mm-hmm. Anybody that wants to go to Hip Hop Chicken. I'm telling you. Hip Hop Chicken. <laughs> hip Hop Chicken. It's way, um, so it's one on Benton Road. And it's one um, down the street from my house on Sheriff Road. Um, I think a lot of them, they started, I think they started in Baltimore. I think they started in Baltimore. Hmm? Oh my, this is a chain. A oh, it's chain. a chain, girl, yes. Well, it's yeah, girl. Going, right? is, is it black owned? Um, I don't it think better not. They, I think they're it's like not, you know, they're, they're not, not they're not black, but they're not white. They're, you can't go there exactly. anymore. Exactly. You, no more. There's some sort of I think they're nope. Indian or something. No or, exactly. Don't give me the flag. No, that no. starts sounding real oh, ignorant. We, Rick, that's why I'm like when we feel live, so let me Yeah. But no, they're they're uh, it's not black. I love all people. It's not white. I love all people. I like y'all food though, so I mean, I, Dorita, I gotta tell you, I can't go. You just told me the Indian folks are running crack seasoning out of the hip hop chicken joint. Act like you know, you're right. Of course, they they don't call it, they we, like we call it crack seasoning. You oh, can just okay, ask for seasoning, okay. and they know what you mean. It's not on the show, but we we call it crack seasoning. Okay, you know, Serena, I really thought ask. you were saying they just called it that, like, oh, no, black like that. Right. Oh, that'd be awful. That'd be terrible. <laughs> and maybe slightly <laughs> illegal. Slightly <laughs> illegal. No, stop it. You can tell me over here just slightly shaking illegal. my head like, no, they didn't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's just Pretty something we so call it. it. It's something oh, yeah. we yeah. call it. But no, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. that is not clean <laughs> eating. No. That's definitely not. No, but... It's it's funny you gotta say that. that. No, it's funny you say that, but it is so hard. You know, we've been talking about fast food and carry out and anything mm -hmm. convenient. It's really hard to get a healthy meal in that same genre. Um, oh, once yeah. I left DC, Absolutely. you know, I mean, granted, Chopped has nine dollar salads, but I don't even know where to get a salad in a bowl, pre made in mm -hmm. the city of Richmond. Um, and so you default to whatever's fast or like McDonald's or, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, I'll go grab a salad. <laughs> and also the thing is, like for me, when I was in fast food, I would be thinking about what, and this sounds terrible, but I would be thinking about what I could eat and drive, like what I could drive and eat. Oh. <laughs> and I that could be a hamburger, a wrap, I, and a burrito. Like I can't drive and eat a salad. Like I can't hold a bowl and a fork. <laughs> yeah. Like we're doing too much. But a hamburger, right. French, French fries. fries. French fries are like perfect. Grab That's two. Right. A chicken mm -hmm. egg, a drumstick. That's right. <laughs> so silly, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. It's any healthy you. foods. No healthy foods can be eaten with one hand. Because if I got carrots, I need some dip. And I can't be holding oh, a dip here <laughs> and carrots here and trying to hold the steering wheel. <laughs> Yes, you, I mean, and I'm already playing not, Candy Crush while I'm driving. It's too much. Right. So, <laughs> like, it's too much. like I should look at the road a little bit. A little. Oh my god. <laughs> so unless you like hold the dip like in this hand with the steering wheel and then dip like this, but then like now that's like in front of your eye, you know, your 
business. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. you can't necessarily, yeah, you're doing too much. I mean, maybe uh, if you got like a wrap and like you had your carrots and your dip in like a tortilla and then you eat that. Mm-hmm. But how full are you if you eat a carrot? <laughs> But I think it illustrates our point Are pretty well. Are you really satisfied? Are you really satisfied? If you can oh have God. enough of it, I mean, I would eat um, tacos and lettuce wrap. wrap. Like, I would eat lettuce wrap tacos if somebody would make them for me and make them easy to eat, like Taco Bell. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking like real meat, though, right? Like, just wrapped yeah. in lettuce. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Don't know that. Because everybody's lettuce going to be clean. So it's mm-hmm. hard trying to get some fresh lettuce on your stuff when you order out. Like, I have ordered like wraps and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh well, I can't eat this lettuce. So y'all, it's brown around the edges. I can't do that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> my hamburger's way better. So I'm relegated to cooking. <laughs> oh well. Wow. Yeah, and who wants to do that all the time? I don't know. My husband sent me a recipe today. It's funny. That's why I was thinking about these tacos. He, it's, it's like a bell pepper that's been hollowed out, mm-hmm. and then you put in the hamburger meat and the cheese and the onions and the black beans and you know all the stuff and some more cheese and some guacamole. I was like, whoa, we okay, got to cut that like cheese. Sounds, Sounds like he was like, on Pinterest. It was. He sent this thing to me from Pinterest on Facebook yeah. Messenger or something, and then he put it in the oven and let it brown for 15 minutes. I was like, wow. Now, why can't I get that out of the drive through and bring it home? <laughs> there, right. wait, so there is, a, there is a place called Chicks. It's H I X. And they're like a healthy Chipotle. Oh. They are, they're definitely like a healthy Chipotle. Um, they only have like two locations and they're both in D.C. But, um, okay. Melissa, the next time you come, Check yeah. out chicks because they're is, people not getting down really with Chipotle good. right now. Yeah, that no, might be exactly. the, people are not getting down with Chipotle right now. Exactly. That might be the, the yeah. thing is, they serve wine. Uh, uh, no, they only have a white and a red, but it ain't bad. Yeah. It ain't hard. Oh, oh, but and they, they have like um, outdoor seating, so you can get your little um, faux Chipotle situation or whatever, and then you can buy a bottle of wine. You can buy a bottle of wine there for ten dollars. Sit outside. Bam, there you go. Oh, man. that's a good idea. Have you guys been to Protein Bar downtown? Oh, I love Protein Bar. Love it. Love it. it is like a healthy. I mean, it doesn't have wine or anything like that, but you can get mm-hmm. smoothies, like juices there, um, like really good salads. I had like a buffalo chicken salad. It wasn't crazy on the calories. It tasted like real food. Let me tell you my favorite breakfast from there. So they have. A <laughs> Let me tell you my favorite breakfast from there. They have a a, a pesto bowl. So Ooh. all it is is it's like a spinach pesto over um, scrambled eggs. They like do chunks of avocado and they put raw spinach in it and sprinkle Parmesan cheese on it. It's a big ass bowl of protein, but it's so good. So good. It's so good. That sounds good. And there's nothing bad in it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Protein. Well, I'm not hungry at all. I'm going to just drink some water and I'm go to sorry. Sleep. Oh at least God. I'm not thinking about spaghetti and meatballs and pizza anymore. That's helpful. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so hungry. I, I had to skip dinner so I could be on time. Oh, I'm sorry. You <laughs> she kind of just randomly threw that out there. I mean, I kept dinner and all, so I could be on y'all. I'm show. so hungry, but no, I'm, I'm time challenged, so I had to make a sacrifice to do this and not embarrass yep. Sarita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, me and Danita went to high school together. Me and Nikki went to high school together. <laughs> Okay, I see you just got your friends on the show. I see you just have an opportunity to your people. She said oh, wait. 825. Yes. yes. Like, Damn. Yeah. But well, um, I didn't realize the time. Oh, my. Dear. I realized it. <laughs> wow. It's never, this has been so much fun. Yes. You guys have great Oh, yeah. Together. So, did you want to like bring it back full circle and drop a few more gems about drinking clean wine, organic, whatever? Who, me? I don't know. Yeah. Some you bad all went to a Yeah. I do. Um, 
Yeah, I just lost train of thought for a second. Right, I'm like, all right, yeah. that was a little great. We just need to replay our there. <laughs> but no, there is a real following with biodynamic wines, organic wines, sustainability, and we get it. Um, at the end of the day, there are no like super benefits of drinking it, um, wine wise. You're just you're supporting a cause, which is awesome. You're supporting the environment, which is awesome, and that's your choice to do that. We understand if you do, we understand if you don't. Um, but as far as the super clean cocktails, um, was it less sugar, Melissa? Less everything. I mean, it's less still, everything. If you're gonna have a cocktail, it's already you're gonna get the carbs, you're gonna get all that stuff. But yeah. at least you're getting you know a serving of vegetables or so, mm -hmm. you know less sugar. Um, yeah things that haven't been heated to over 150 degrees, stuff like that. So, I mean, if anything, it makes you feel a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it keeps you hydrated. I mean, that's definitely something to combat hydration when you add juice to your cocktails, though. Yeah. And I think with wine, um, I won't say that it doesn't have any benefits. It's just not a matter of, like, less calories or anything like that. Yeah. It's more so um, none of the pesticides. And yep. yeah. um, none of the other, like maybe arsenic or bleach or some yes. of the other yeah. things you may use to filter and find the wine. So I and think also, it's just eating organic vegetables and yeah. like regular vegetables. Um, also, um, I forgot to mention sulfites. That's a whole nother oh, hangout. Wow. That's a whole nother yeah. hangout. But, okay, we'll um, talk about that in April. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sulfites. Another oh, hangout, but sulfites is involved yeah. with the whole, um, with some of the processes of uh, sustainability and organic and that kind of stuff too. But that that subject is so, mm, wow. Anyway, yeah. we won't even get into that. But um. But yeah, thought it'd be a good idea. Um, because yeah. Melissa, you came up with it to talk drinking clean and all that mm -hmm. for um January, because a lot of people New Year's resolutions want to, you know, change their habits and do something a little healthier and, you know, just be more mindful of what they put into their bodies. Like we're gonna put alcohol in, so that's just a <laughs> given. But if you're gonna do it, then just, you know, try to cut back on some of the, you know extra yeah. unnecessary things that our body does not need. So. Yeah. Well, Danita, hey, thank you Nikki, for that. tell Hi. everybody where they can find you. Yes. Um, you guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Zen in a Jar, all one word. Um, I have an Etsy shop, and if you go to the website, zenajar.com, it'll tell you where it is. I really enjoy making all this shit. I'm happy <laughs> to... <laughs> I'm happy I to make you guys some custom things. My yes. whole focus is really just stopping and enjoying life. Period. This is an amazing hangout. Yay! And putting our zen in a jar. That's right. Yes. Yes. Wow. You have to be able to access it immediately. Yes. So I've already started to um, cyber stalk some of you. So I'm going to find everyone and follow you, and I'll be able to send you some stuff from there. Okay. Yes. Definitely stay in touch, Miss Nikki. This was awesome. Yes, yes, so much this was so Thank fun. you guys for having me. No yeah. problem. And for so everyone guys, else watching I, us um, now, oh, or no, oh, go ahead, Sarita. No, I was going to say our next hangout is February 9th, and we're going to be talking about generational drinking. Mm -hmm. um, baby boomers versus Generation X versus millennials. So how and where and how much they drink their wine. Right. So get in where you fit in. Mm -hmm. And our special guest will be Katie, Katie Kavanaugh from Kavanaugh Wine Imports. Yes. Yay. Nice. I can't wait to see that. Bye, yes. guys. All right. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye.